collapsible pain cave or a permanent indoor training setup. What would be best for you? You probably already know that I'm a huge fan of indoor riding and not such a huge fan of riding outside in the rain, getting cold and wet and mucky. I'd much rather jump on my indoor trainer in the garage and crack on, but not everybody has the space for a permanent setup. And even if you do, do you really want to dedicate a whole room, a whole garage, a whole cellar just to indoor training? Well, in this very video, we're going to discuss the pros and the cons of a permanent and a collapsible indoor setup. Let's get into it. The great thing about riding indoors is that it's fast. One minute you can be sat on the couch, the next minute you're powering along on the indoor trainer. And another great thing about it is that it is very minimal faff. You know, you don't have to get 101 layers on when the weather's bad outside. You don't have to worry about riding in really busy traffic. Sometimes I even prefer riding indoors to outdoors. But shh. I've had all sorts of different indoor training setups. I've had my parents' kitchen, I've had a dungy cellar, I've had a living room, and now I'm lucky enough to have a whole garage with a permanent setup in it. But when it comes to indoor training and pain caves, everybody's will look slightly different, but you have to work with the space that you have. But today, we're gonna look at two very different pain caves, but they're both making the most of the space that they have. So first of all, we're gonna go and see Matt. Now, Matt actually works at GCN and he helps produce some of our content. He's a keen rider, but he lives in a very busy family house and doesn't have a permanent indoor training setup. So let's go visit him and see how he trains indoors. Hi, Manna. Hi, Matt, how are you doing? I'm good, yeah, come on in. Thanks. So Matt, how do you manage your indoor training setup? Well, I mean, I have to do my indoor training in my office, basically. This is the room in the house which we've converted for me and my wife to work. Um, and we don't have another spare room. I've got three kids, everything's full. We live in the middle of Bristol. We don't have a garage. So I don't really have any options. So work and pain cave all in one in this all room. All happens in here. All happens here. And we have yeah. got little snippets of you know your bike on the wall a few bits how do you go about from like converting your office into a pain cave right well when i do get that you know spare half an hour or an hour to to jump on the bike and do some indoor training i think i've got it nailed down so i can do this pretty quickly so I've, you've had a lot of practice <laughs> i've had a lot of practice exactly so i've got my trainer and my fan under the desk there I've got a box here with my shoes, the power supply, the towel, the little Allen key I need to take the wheel Very off. Very organised. I've got my mat here to roll out. And then, as you said, I've got my bike on the wall. So I reckon I've got this down pretty slick. The dog sometimes is a complicating factor, but she'll move, <laughs> she'll move when I tell her to. How long do you reckon it takes you to set everything up and I, get on the bike? I reckon from downing tools for work, to being on the bike, I can just about do it in five minutes, which is probably okay. about the same for getting out the door on an outdoor ride. And would you mind setting everything up for us so we can see what your pain cave looks like when it's not an office in the daytime? Absolutely, I can do that. And uh, yeah, I'll try and do it in under five minutes. Yeah, I'll time you. <laughs> First of all, we've got to move Nelly. Oh, <laughs> Come on, Nelly. She looks very happy there. There you go. Oh, off she goes. There you go, come on. <laughs> Wahoo are a partner of GCN and Matt's been able to get the setup that works for him. The Kicker Core Trainer is a direct drive model with most of the features of the bigger brothers but in a lighter, smaller package. He's also got the floor mounted headwind fan and a mat to save the floor. So Matt, you got that set up pretty quick and I timed it around five minutes, so go to work. But you've obviously got your system and setup nailed down to a T. What tips would you give people that might have quite a similar training setup to you that maybe want to copy you? Well, I think like I said earlier, man, on having everything in the room organized so you know exactly where it is, that's, that's really important. I mean, things about my setup that help, I think having the, um, the kicker core is really helpful because it's quite easy to move around. So it doesn't take up too much space under my desk and it's pretty easy to get out and get, you know, get going on yeah. it. So that, that's, that's a big thing for me. Um, 
other things that you know could almost be disadvantages sometimes also help me get on and do thing do it so the fact that I have to work around other people and tell everyone that I'm going to get on and train. You actually, announce it to the whole house. <laughs> exactly. That kind of makes me get on and yeah. train sometimes when otherwise I might be thinking, yeah. so that actually is sort of a sort of an advantage of this setup for me. Are there any other disadvantages to your setup, would you say? The, the coexisting with other people bit is, is always part of that. So I can't always train when I want to. Mm. And sometimes, you know, when I don't announce it, I've had some funny instances where, you know, kids have come back from school with a friend, come through the front door, <laughs> and Dad's in the middle of a VO2 max interval, yeah. just, just, you know, five feet from the front door. And, they, you know, they, they, that's a little bit weird sometimes. Yeah, I, I can see how there that little, could be. <laughs> little things like that. But, but generally, I don't find the, there's too many disadvantages. You know, like I say, having it... It's pretty much a straight choice between indoors and outdoors with mm. not much difference in hassle either way. So it's just a decision. Do I want to go outdoors? What's the weather like? Or do I want to do indoors? And then I just crack on and get my ride done. In your ideal scenario, what would your perfect dream indoor setup look like? Oh God, there's, you know, you get sucked into Insta and social media and look at all these amazing pain caves people have. And that's, they do look amazing. But if I had that space, I'd probably do something else with it. This is this is what I need. You know, I I'm not competing, yeah. I'm not racing, I'm just riding for fun, and this is just to help me stay on top of my fitness. So I, I don't want it to dominate my life any more than this. This is part of me enjoying cycling and being outdoors and all the rest of it. It just helps keep me keep me going. And I, you know, I do like the odds with race. And I guess at the end of the day, even if you did have, you know, this amazing permanent setup, the outcome is going to be the same. Exactly. You're on your bike, you're pedaling, you're having fun. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you very much for having us, Matt. So I'll leave you to pedal and put some hard work in. All right, I'll crack on then. Enjoy. Right, next up, I've come to Alex's house where he has a permanent indoor training setup that some of you might have seen in some GCN tech videos. It's pretty swanky, so let's go see if Alex is in. I did tell him I was coming, so hopefully he's in. Hi Alex. What do you want? I want to see your indoor <laughs> training setup. It's as if I knew you were arriving. Yeah. Come on, this is my crib. Oh la la. And I know Alex, you you are a big fan of indoor training. But what I do, do you love, love most about having a permanent setup? Well, I mean, it's a super like mega luxury to have. But I think for me, probably like ease of use is most important. I mean, there's only so much like drive and motivation you can have to want to ride indoors. So why use a little bit of that up, setting everything up where you can just come in, jump on and away you go. That is very true. But you haven't always had a permanent setup, have you? When you were racing, take us back to then. What did your setup look like then? So in the house we previously lived in, we didn't have the luxury of a garage. So all of the bikes and stuff was crammed into like a little closet downstairs. <laughs> And when I wanted to do indoor training, I'd have to like unpack half the stuff out, get the trainer, get the trainer out, unfold it, and put it into the front room. And There's no ease about that, is there? <laughs> and so then I'd have um, even my laptop on the like dining room table with like whatever platform running that I wanted to use, or I'd connect it up to the telly, and I would literally just be in the lounge, like turbo trading. And even the dog was like, "What is this guy doing?" Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. So when you moved, was it quite high on the priority list to have like somewhere that was designated to, you know, being a yeah. pain cave? But yeah. it's not just a pain cave. You know, you saw, you saw your bike, so you do a bit of filming. And you've got yeah. Kind so of we like kind of have a I, bit of everything. Like as a general rule of thumb, obviously, once the weather turns bad in winter time, I try and have like at least one setup out ready to go. So Chloe quite often rides the trainer, and so do I. And sometimes we have a second one out. Got so enough can, space? Yeah, so we can have two like trainers going at the same time. But now and again, I have to pack it all away because like, like you say, we'll either be filming stuff or I'll be like wanting to do other stuff out here. So it's not like 100% permanent, but generally it sits there ready to go. I hop on and do a good workout. I'm good to go. Right, Alex, you've got all the equipment under the sun here. Talk us through what you've got in terms of equipment. Well, it's basically the full works this. So you this have. is the kick and move, the newest one, which yeah. I've got the luxury of getting my hands on. Very now, lucky. I think yeah, I should probably highlight, if you're gonna have a setup which you're gonna wanna move around a lot, this is perhaps not necessarily 
the best option out there, but it comes with lots of different options. Like, you know, it, it can move forwards and backwards. It tries to make the feeling of riding the bike as realistic as possible, but it does have a much bigger footprint and platform and it's heavier to move about. Takes up quite a bit more room compared um, to some of the other ones. Yeah, exactly. Plus I've got it paired up with the climb, which sometimes I just leave locked in the normal mode. Sometimes I leave it depending on if I'm like Zwifting or something. And again, it adds like another little dimension to trying to make indoor training as fun as possible. Then up front, of course, the world's most elaborate fan for indoor training. <laughs> which, which is needed. <clears throat> it is needed. But if I pedal and make this whole wake up, right? The fan is connected to the trainer, which is then connected to my head unit. Look at this. 100% fan Whoa. safe. <laughs> so I That's actually find cool. that That's I actually find cool. that really helpful having the fan connected to the head unit because like there's nothing more annoying than riding, having to stop, adjust the fan. Yeah. And then also when you've got your head unit paired up to the trainer, you can either use the head unit to control it, whether you're doing a workout, erg mode or you can just flick the buttons across and leave it for, say, like Zwift to yeah. control what the trainer's doing rather than you having to worry about it. Right, Alex, I think it's about time we see this setup in action. Do you mind going and get your cycling kit on? Oh, I saw quite a big smile on your face, I though. I thought you'd never ask. Yeah, all right, I'll be back in a minute then. <laughs> You're not turning the heating on, though? No, I'll not be having cold, that. don't worry. Expect more from our GCM presenters. Too soft these days. We've said a lot of good things about a permanent indoor setup, but yeah. are there any downsides? Um, yeah, I don't think we can kind of like pretend that everything's all good. So, okay, indoor setup like this, there's no getting away from it. It's going to set you back a fair chunk of money, which mm. for some people is worth it, and other people is perhaps not if they're not going to really utilise it. Second of all, if I do have to tidy this lot away, which I do now and again, it's actually a massive job to put it all away and then get it yeah. all set back up again. So. Yeah, that's quite a frustration for me. Well, Alex, thanks very much for having us in your pain cave. It's all right. I'm going to get going now and I'll leave you to, to pedal your way. Oh, I mean, I'm good. definitely going to be here for hours. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Well, all right. see you soon. Right, Manon, see you later. Right, now Manon's gone, I can slow down. So there you have it, two very different indoor training setups, but both of them will get you set up on the bike and riding, whether that's on Zwift, the Wahoo System app, or simply spinning your legs and watching a movie. But let me know down in the comment section below how you train indoors, what your indoor training setup looks like. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.